A lot of us have crazy schedules. We wake up early, we study or work until late in the evening. We have coffee late at night to try and keep up with our intention of staying up late. However, a lot of us make this conscious decision without knowing that it affects our long-term health. But when should you do things? When should you study? When should you work? When should you go to bed? Luckily, my friend, I've done the research. And I found the solution to the questions we were looking for. What should our day look like according to science? But to understand our solution, we need to go to back to the root of our problems. This means that it all starts not when we wake up, but actually in the evening, when we go to bed. Our sleeping schedule varies every day, and it also depends whether we have a free day, whether it's weekend. We all have this internal clock that tells us, hey, it's time to sleep, it's late, and you're tired. But how do you think people woke up when the alarm was not invented. They would mainly wake up with the sun. They would be tired, they would go to bed, it's dark, and then when the sun was shining in their face, they would just wake up, right? With the inventions of screens, this cycle was completely disrupted. And it even got worse with the invention of your phone. The blue light that also illuminates our screens also dumps the production of melatonin. This hormone is key to tell our bodies to start preparing to go to bed. But blue light is not your only enemy. Exposing yourself to any sort of light in the evening affects any sort of melatonin. By using your phone in bed, you end up altering the levels of melatonin in your brain. And that is something you would not like to do at night especially right before going to bed. You actually want to sleep. The problem is that your eyes actually get tired and the receptors inside your eyes become weaker when reacting to light, meaning that the light that is able to wake you up in the morning is actually capable of keeping you up in the night. This is why experts recommend at least 30 minutes of no screen time before going to bed. The most important cells in our eyes at the time of regulating our internal watch are those coming from above. Thus, any light that comes from the ceiling should be turned off. Does it mean that you need to spend your evening in the dark? Nah. You can use lights that come from below your eyes. And if you like a little bit more romanticism, you can even turn on some candles which barely have any effect in your eyes. for you. Whoa, 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 sorry, wrong platform. Another idea is to activate the night mode in your phone. This will decrease the blue light that comes from it and will help you fall asleep at night. And you might tell me, dude, I am a night old. I cannot do this. Well, let me tell you, science proves you wrong. Some cool dudes with white capes took a bunch of night owls into the woods to conduct research and they were able to prove that this is After a few days, you're actually able to restart your night cycle and start sleeping early. I leave the link down below in case you want to read more. Another issue that comes with sleep is dinner. What is this? The baseline portion sizes of snacks and drinks and even dinner have skyrocketed in the past few years. According to the American Journal of Public Health, food portions have grown up to 140% since 1970s. So if you go out, you should consider in taking one third of that food home. Furthermore, watch out the times you are actually eating as eating too late and too much might affect your brains and body activity while you sleep, which in turn may lead to diverse effects like weight gain, um, 
metabolic syndrome, syndrome and even reflux. Now that you are ready for bed, you can actually go to sleep. Once you wake up, you will want to skip the shower and coffee. Wait, what? Yes, I said it right. No shower and no coffee in the morning. Showering in the morning can actually mess your skin and dry out your hair. This is because in addition to taking off the dirt and pollutants, you're actually also showering away many of the natural oils that are beneficial for your hair and skin and that keep it healthy. So when you look whether you want to shower and how often, you should consider the average dryness of your skin and skull and your hair and the textures. So if they're not very oily, but they're also not very dry, you likely only need to bath once or twice a week. But please don't take this advice if you go work out. No one, and tell me no one, wants to sit next to a stinky person. Now coffee. Many things naturally happen to our bodies when we wake up. In addition to developing a magical ability to ignore loud noises like an alarm, our bodies also start pumping out the hormone cortisol, sort of natural caffeine, let's call it. This level peaks between 8 and 9 in the morning. According to a study done by Stephen Miller, the intake of coffee at this time, instead of waking you up, it might actually affect your natural cortisol, natural levels, making you even more tired long term. Now, when we go about sports, science says that you should be doing sports between 3 p.m. and dinner time. This will both work as a natural way to burn your remaining energy and also a way of getting rid of stress. However, if you go for a heavy session, try not to do it really late in the evening as this will boost in energy, it will give you like pump and it might actually come at the moment you go to bed and will not allow you to sleep. So if you feel tired during the day, watch out for your caffeine levels, as the recommended level of caffeine for a normal adult is about 400 milligrams per day, or the equivalent to two or three coffees, depending on what type of coffee you drink. Some cafe coffees are more watery, for example. Caffeine might not allow you to sleep at night, and like too much of anything, too much caffeine comes with risks, including migraine, headaches, which are the same, irritability, uh, stomach, and even muscle tremors. So it's really good to know how much you're actually getting into your body. Now, to summarize, this is how you should structure your day according to science. Does this fit your routine? Well. Maybe it does, but maybe it doesn't. Probably to me it doesn't, for example. I'm pretty sure it doesn't sound really tempting to actually follow what science says. However, if you, it does make a big influence on our energy levels. We should make and adapt the necessary changes in order to balance our energy as having too much, it's not really nice, but having too little is definitely not desirable. Mm -hmm.